Hi everyone, it's Jacob Leffler. I'm just going to be um, responding to discussion board number one, uh, just which is the uh, which is just about the um, two to three supports that you can give at risk students and or um, students with 504 plans or anything like that, including English uh, English learners. Um, so I have some experience. I've been I've been a uh, one to one aide for the last couple of years, and um, I seem to always get put on the toughest cases. So um, I, I, I actually like that though. I, I took the job so I can get a, get harder cases, um, more moderate, severe, um, students. And I think that one thing that has really helped is doing the ABC chart. So, excuse me. So the antecedent behavior and then consequence chart. Um, I had to do that for one student and it really helped him just because, um, his previous aides would only tell him when he was getting um, a negative thing written down. So what we'd have to do is if every time he had a behavior, we'd have to write it down and then we would have a, a certain number of um, consequences that we would give them. They weren't all like, they weren't all negative. Some of them were just be um, taking a 10 minute break or um, I would give him some calming, um, this, some like calming beads to play with a little bit. And just, we had a bag full of, um, just kinetic things that he could play with, like some kinetic sand and a, a nice stress ball that he could do if he was being really, if he was just kind of like being really distracted, not really paying attention in class. Like if I saw him just tapping on his desk a lot and looking around, I would just give him a stress ball just so he could have some type of, um, just like some type of activity that he was doing. So back to the ABC chart, um, I would always tell him, oh, sorry, there was a p part on the bottom where we would give him a tally mark for every 15 minutes of expected behavior. So he was allowed to get three good tally marks per class. Um, and what I started doing was just telling him every single time I would write down a positive or negative thing, just because I also needed him to know that I wasn't just writing down negative things. So every time I would, I would give him, go, hey man, Every time I would give him a positive check mark, I'd be like, hey man, fit another 15 minutes, you got another good mark, great job, give him like a high five or something like that. Um, and I work with uh, eighth graders and seventh graders and even just giving them some type of affirmation and some type of positive reinforcement really helps them. And another thing that I've, that I really, uh, that I think helped like some supports is just the accommodations and modifications in the IEPs. Um, I know that those those are, it's kind of, a, that's pretty vague, but I think that the big thing is as an aide that I've learned is if there's something in the IEP, if there's something that's not in the IEP that you are doing that is helping the student in a positive way, um, I've had all the psychs and IEP and IEP team members tell me that if there's something that I'm doing that's not on there, then just tell them and they might add it onto the IEP. So it's just, always as an aide or a teacher, you can always look out for extra accommodations or modifications that you've found and maybe add them to the IEP just to give them a better playing field and more even playing field to work on. Um, so that's pretty much it. So thank you for listening.